The Inca story starts to change near the end of Viracocha's reign as Sapa Inca. Viracocha Inca came to power in 1410 CE, controlling a city with some outlying control, but late in his reign, the mighty Chanka came knocking. When in 1438, the Chanka attacked, Viracocha fled, but his son, birth name Yupanqui, remained and fended off the Chancas. Yupanqui renamed himself Pachacuti, became Sapa Inca in 1438, and with many Chanka warriors now in his ranks, he set off and conquered much territory. It's generally thought that the glorious Machu Picchu was built as one of the estates for Pachacuti. Pachacuti ruled until 1471 when he's followed by Tupac, who ruled until 1493. Tupac Inca had been a general under his father, and he conquered the Chimu kingdom with their capital of Chanchan. Tupac extended the empire further still in the north and east, but mostly in the south where Inca rule came to reach modern Santiago. Let's briefly encounter the Chimu civilization who'd been conquered. The Chimu culture got going around 900 CE, following the end of Moche times, and they'd eventually gotten into the business of conquering neighboring lands as well around 1200 CE. Around 1375 CE, the Chimu, having come to control the neighboring Jacatepeque Valley, conquered the Sikan culture. The Sikan had also picked up in the wake of the Moche, with the early sight of Chotun popping up around 700 CE. Around 800 CE, Batan Grande was founded, and the cultural namesake site of Sikan joined in around 900 CE. After an 1100 CE, El Nino wrecked many cities. The ones that were rebuilt, like Chotuna and Sikan, ceased having depictions made of the figure most common in their prior artwork a possible deity. The El Nino had also altered the course of the Moche River, which rendered less efficient their post-El Nino efforts at rebuilding their canals. Back to Tupac Inca, the second great Inca conqueror. In an effort to maintain his bloodline's purity, he married his full sister. Huayna Capac followed Tupac as Sapa Inca in 1493 CE. Huayna Capac subdued the people of Chachapoyas and shored up his empire's border, inviting many villages, with his army there should they not accept the invitation, to join the empire. Further, he was instrumental in developing the administrative apparatus of the empire. Huayna died in 1528 CE after contracting smallpox, his would-be ear died of smallpox as well, and two of the sons now left behind vied for the throne. Huascar declared himself Sapa Inca in Cusco, while Atahualpa declared himself Sapa Inca out of Quito. Civil war between the two followed. Atahualpa captured Huascar in 1532 CE, and he ordered the execution of Huascar after Atahualpa himself had already been captured by the Spanish. In November of 1532, Atahualpa goes out to meet the Spanish, who are led by Pizarro. Pizarro's men ambush Atahualpa and take him captive. After fending off Incan military attempts at rescuing their leader, the Spanish drew heavy ransoms for Atahualpa's release. The ransoms were given, but Atahualpa remained in custody until Pizarro executed him in 1533. After this, Pizarro places Tupa Walpa as his puppet Sapa Inca, but Tupa Walpa dies shortly after, and Manco, son of Huayna Capac, is made Sapa Inca. Manco would rebel against his Spanish puppeteers and actually realized some military success against the Spanish, but he soon had to retreat, and then he served out of Vilcabamba as Sapa Inca of the Neo-Inca state. The last Sapa Inca of the Neo-Inca state is Tupac Amaru, who is captured and killed by the Spanish in 1572, bringing a final end to the holdout Incan power.